Since I get asked a lot about my prints and how I make my prints and how to do this and that, I decided to put it in one video so everyone can just go look and figure it out how to do it because I think everyone should make their own prints. They're very fun. I print my own prints right now on this printer, the P900, but I used to order them online and that worked fine. This is the paper I use for the prints. I found the really nice luscious paper I used for flat fine art prints was just too thick and dusty for this. So you want something that's smooth and it is thick like thick cardstock but it's thin enough that it will adhere to the wood and it's easy to work with and glue on. I have seen some people before they glue on they will seal the paper. That didn't work for me at all. It still wrinkled like crazy and it was just an extra expensive step that didn't do anything for me. The method that works best for me is put the glue on the wood, wet the paper, glue it on, done. So after I print these, I cut them out. I will cut off two edges so that I can use that to line up. And then the rest, I just trim once it's dry. I have matte Mod Podge, I have a brayer, I have a spray bottle, and a foam brush to put the glue on, but you could really use anything. You could probably use your fingers because as long as you get it even, you're good. This one is gonna be a Meadowlark one. Start off by trimming two edges that you do not want to be cropped because later when we're cleaning up the edges, part of the image can get removed. When I trim these, I keep these scraps because they have right angles and that's super helpful for scraping off the overflowing glue. Put on your glue and be careful not to get too much. You don't want it very thick because you want it to get tacky. Spray the back of the image and apply the damp side down. At this point, you're just gonna do a lot of finessing. You can let it get more tacky before you apply the paper, but I like to just slap it on. And then I flip it over. I use this right angle to clean up the glue. Now as it continues to dry, you just wanna keep an eye on it, make sure that no edges are popping up. I always seal the edges because otherwise, if they get dirty or oil stained or anything, you can't get that out. But if they're varnished, you can just wipe it off with a cloth. So I always seal them. The real test is gonna be a nine by 12. I hope this works without too much fuss because I'd like to use one adhesive for everything without having to switch back and forth on the size. This works way better than I thought, surprisingly well. It is a little finicky, but I love how smoothly it goes on and I actually love how quickly it dries because you're not having to finagle it for so long. Initially, it's not that big of a deal to get any glue on the wood because it doesn't, you won't be able to see it because I'm gonna varnish with acrylic varnish, but I know over time the glue may change color. It's archival, but it does yellow slightly, so I don't want there to be like a spot of glue that's yellowed. So I might start cleaning those off with a Q-tip and water. Wonderful, I'm very happy with this. I think 11 by 14 will be fine. So using this new paste is much faster. They tack down way faster as opposed to the Yes paste where it was a whole day, <laughs> as opposed to maybe 20 minutes. They do take a couple weeks to cure, but they're gonna be dry to the touch. It's just the chemical process of curing takes a little bit. I'm really happy with how this went. I've yet to try the 11 by 14, but strangely enough, the bigger sizes were actually easier to do than the little ones, so I think that one will be just fine. I really like the freedom of making my own prints that I can just print on demand make what's needed. Right now I have some hanging in a cider house, so the ones I sell I can just go look and go home and make them and replace them and it's so much easier and then I don't have just a ton of stock sitting around. So I hope this helps and I hope you can make your own prints. Here's my final review. This has blue on the back so I know it was a Mod Podge one and this one is wrinkly. I don't know if I'll actually be able to show it to you but it does have wrinkles along here. And that was the only big one I did that was wrinkly. The other ones were totally smooth. So I don't know what was up with this one. Maybe I just had too much glue or something. But I decided I'm just gonna use the Mod Podge on the six by six and under, maybe the eight by tens. But the bigger ones, I'm gonna use the Yes Paste. It's just too risky if they don't turn out because one, they're expensive, but two, I don't wanna just be making a lot of garbage and having all that waste if it doesn't work out. So that's what we're gonna do. If you wanna try Mod Podge though, go for it. It worked on the other ones. I just had one that was bad that made me a little 
worried about using it for the bigger ones. Something I get asked quite a bit is how do these do in bathrooms? So I took one and I put it in a bathroom. This is using the Yes Paste and it is varnished twice with Liquitex acrylic varnish. And this is a small bathroom and it's right next to the shower. There's the shower, so this is prime spot. It's been about a month and as you can see, it is lifting away from the edge. This is the only part the only side that's doing that the other edges have been okay so i don't know if maybe i just didn't get the varnish seal right there very well or maybe there wasn't enough glue on that side or if it truly is the humidity but yeah this is not going to be bathroom proof even though it's not lifting that bad but it it certainly is lifting so i tell people like with most art most prints if you want to take care of it try to keep it out of super humid environments or environments where the temperature is going to change quite a bit because it might lift and you can just glue it down again, but better to just avoid it. Good morning, we gave us Enid. It's Friday and it's varnish day. I glued these down yesterday with Mod Podge. They dried pretty fast, but then I left them an entire day just to make sure they really had a chance to get on there. I have not varnished the ones with Mod Podge yet, so I'm really hoping that it goes well. I'm looking at the edges now and they look like they've stayed down. I was reading about Mod Podge and it says it's archival, but then I read somewhere that it yellows over time and then I was thinking, that's not archival, is it? So I looked it up. What does archival actually mean? And it means that the pH is either neutral or it's not acidic. <laughs> so it won't break down the materials, but that doesn't mean that it won't turn yellow. That's a whole different thing. So that was good to know. So there's a couple reasons that I don't seal this with Mod Podge. One is because it's gonna yellow over time. And from what I've seen, it's not that extreme, but yellow is yellow and I don't want these to, to yellow because I spent so much time making sure I had the right paper and the right inks that they weren't gonna change color and fade and all that. So that's why I'm using the Liquitex varnish. It is, it has UV protection so it's gonna keep things from fading and changing color and it's not gonna yellow. I know a lot of people, they're really concerned about making something affordable and accessible, which is wonderful. I just wanna make sure I'm not making things that are not gonna last very long. It's at this stage where I will put the hanging hardware on the back because I don't like to handle these a lot when they're finished. I don't like to varnish them and then have them face down and stuff because I don't want the varnish to get scratched or crack or anything like that. I was using a green pen for the back of these. This is a Posca paint pen, but I switched to blue because I'm using a new blue. I'm using the Mod Podge and I want to be able to keep an eye on them. So if they start to do anything like curl or something like that, I will know exactly what batch it's from. So. Some people, you can number them if you want, but that's how I, I'm gonna keep my eye on those. So far, my neighbors have not complained about all the drill sounds, which is great, because I've been getting ready for shows for months now. <laughs> so there's a lot of tiny screws. Every panel gets two screws, so if I'm making 50, you know, there's 100 of them, but they've been uh, pretty cool about it. Although to be fair, they're the loudest neighbors I've ever had. So I think we balance each other out pretty well. Everyone gets a Montana sticker because they are made in Montana. They're part of the program. Just like that sticker bracket name and on to the next one. My final review is yes, you can use Mod Podge and not get wrinkles. But since I did have some small issues with wrinkling on the 9 by 12 and 11 by 14 sizes, I'm not gonna use the Mod Podge on the bigger sizes, only on the six by six and below. My top tips are spray the back of your paper with water before you glue it to the wood and try not to get the Mod Podge anywhere visible on the sides or especially not the top unless you can deal with the yellowing. But there you go, that's how I make them. Good luck, I hope your prints turn out amazing.